daily. He lives in the spectrum of the universe. When he ventures beyond this limit, he is in the unknown, a realm where strange forces are brought into play. When man attempts to misuse these forces, he is sometimes destroyed. This is Macabre. The Far East Network presents, in special performance, Macabre. Tonight's story, The Crystalline Man. Yes? This is Thomas Paine of the National Museum. I'm calling for Professor Abernathy. We've been trying to reach you for a week. I've been out of town. Gone. Uh, it's about the expedition to the glacier. Oh, oh what? Have they returned? Well, yes. Unexpectedly. Did they find anything? Uh, not exactly. You see, uh, Professor Norden... Come, come. What about Professor Norden? Uh, he... He did not come back. What? The members of the expedition are meeting tonight at the museum. Can you attend? Certainly, Mr. Payne. What time? Eight o'clock. And may I ask you, sir, not to fail us? Of course I won't. But what's happened to Norden? At the moment, sir, I cannot say. We'll expect you then at eight o'clock. What we have to report is of the utmost urgency. Now, gentlemen, a simple exercise expedition to the Arctic, and you come back whimpering like children. Now, really, what do you expect me to think, Professor Abernathy? Uh, please be seated, Dr. Vega. Thank God you've come. You know Thomas Paine of the museum? Yes, yes, he telephoned me. And my associate, Craig Taylor. How do you do, Mr. Taylor? Good evening, Doctor. Now, what happened to Norton? It's uh, hard to explain. Professor, either he came back or he didn't. Which was it? He did not. That thing in the other room. Not yet, Payne. Thing? Thing? Well, what thing? Before you see it, Doctor, it will take explanation. What do you think? I am a child? You believe I'm, I'm too naive to know the facts? Let me refresh you. I backed your expedition. My father disappeared in those wilds five years ago and was never found. Professor Norton thought he knew the route, that he could find some trace, but you return without him cowering like a pack of whipped puppies. Now, speak up, gentlemen. What happened? Have patience with us, Dr. Vega. We, uh, we have stumbled upon something we do not understand. Something that has cost the life of Professor Norton. And may not stop there. Well, well, go ahead. Tell me the full story. We had camped for the night on the glacier. The next morning we noticed a fissure in the ice. A passageway large enough for a man to crawl through. In the ice we could see the frozen body of a dog. It wasn't one of ours. I thought it might have been one of your father's. Norton decided to crawl into the fissure to investigate... Taylor remained with me. A storm came up suddenly, and when we called out to Norton in the passageway. Professor Norton, have you found any trace? Professor! What do you make of it, Craig? He's been in there 15 minutes. Do you think he's all right? I don't know. We haven't heard from him since he left us. With the storm blowing, a fissure isn't exactly a safe place to be. Danger of an avalanche. Better warn him. Professor Norton, there's a storm. Let's get out of here. No answer. Got a flashlight? It's dark in there. Yes. Come on, we better look for him. Fisher doesn't appear too old. No, perhaps only a few days old. Otherwise, there'd be a heavy layer of snow on the bottom. I hope that ice overhead is solid. Any kind of slide would bury us. Pitch black now. I didn't realize the passage was this deep. What's that ahead? Huh? It's like a rock. Where the glacier meets the mountainside. Two more feet and we'll be there. Why, it looks like the entrance of a cave. Norton must be inside. Certainly took a chance going this far by himself. Shall we go in? We have no choice. Look, it's not a natural cave. You're right. 
The entrance is a carved arch. Solid quartz. Do you recognize the symbols? I've never seen anything like this before. Quite a fine, Craig, and by coincidence, too. If that fissure in the ice hadn't opened here, it might have been lost forever. How old would you guess it is? Impossible to tell. We've got to find Norton. Hand me the light. I'll go first. Professor Norton! Professor! Looks like an ancient crypt. Tarnished urns, ornate carving. Unhealthy atmosphere, Craig. I don't know what we've stumbled on, but from the past I know nothing about. Where could Norton have gone? Seems to be the only room. He's got to be here. I'll move the light around once again, slowly. A man just doesn't disappear in thin air. What's that? Where? A pile of rubble. Something caved in. Yes, in the corner. Come on. It's Norton. He's alive. Quick, clear the rocks. He's caught in the slide. Professor Norton, can you hear me? Yes. I'm done for, Abernathy. You and Crane, get out of here as fast as you can. Nonsense. We'll have you free in a moment. There's another room behind those rocks. Don't, don't go in there. I moved some rocks to cover the doorway. Slide. Buried me. Did you find a trace of Dr. Vega's father? No. Just cover that doorway and leave. Norton. Poor devil. He's gone. Strange. What's that? I am not a medical doctor. But he doesn't seem to have been fatally injured by the cave-in. What do you mean? The answer may lie... In there. He was probably delirious. We'd better get out of here. But before we do, shouldn't we have a look? Norton warned us. Would a scientist refuse? After you, Professor. Careful, Craig. Don't upset that boulder. It could stop all our plans. He's under that arch. We don't know how old this is. It may crumble. Why, it's just a room like the other. Look, straight ahead. The foot of that altar. Yes. Sparkles like a jewel. That's what Norton warned us about. Nonsense. We're scientists, Craig. Norton was no fool. Neither am I. Let's have a closer look. A ten-foot jewel. A prize from the Arabian Nights. Or a quartz sarcophagus. Of course. Why was Norton afraid of it? It's not locked. The lid can be raised. Don't, Don't. Professor... My boy, this is what every scientist dreams of. How can you refuse? All right. I can't tell why. Something seems to be warning me to leave this alone. If you have to, take a look and let's get out of here. Harry, give me a hand. Okay. Uh, What did you find in the sarcophagus, Professor Abernathy? Will you follow us, please, Dr. Vega? Wait. It might be better to destroy it. Mr. Taylor, you can't do that. Yes, I know. The museum. You might remember we have financed your exploits for many years. There is some sort of obligation to us, don't you think? Pardon me. I had forgotten the commercial aspects. The public has a right to see these remnants of mankind's past. Gentlemen, uh, will you follow me, please? Frankly, we are at a loss to make it out. It is entirely beyond the range of my experience. In the center of the room, if you will. The quartz sarcophagus. Well, what are we waiting for? Open it. I hope we don't regret this. Help me, Craig. Okay. There it is, Dr. Vega. This is incredible. Is it some kind of joke? We wish it were, Doctor. A man. A crystalline man, perfect in detail, even to his thumbprints. It's fantastic. What do you think, Mr. Payne? I haven't had a great deal of time to research it. However, I can't link him to any period of recorded history. He is not prehistoric as he resembles modern man. His clothing is well tailored, though of a design I've never seen. He looks 45, intelligent and scholarly. He doesn't have the appearance of death. The strange part is, instead of flesh and blood, he seems to be pure crystal. Is it possible the man could once have lived? And if he could, 
What forgotten tongue lost in the antiquity of time would he speak? We may know tomorrow. How do you mean? I believe that by some process unknown to us today, this man is still alive. It's no use. We've tried everything. He is solid crystal. I was mistaken. He is perfect to the last blood vessel. Why should a man who is not flesh and blood need blood vessels? Shall we admit he is merely a sculptured statue? We don't seem able to prove otherwise. But I feel some obvious fact is escaping us. Wait. There is one further chance. He may be a silicon form of life. In that case, he should respond to electric shock. Be recharged, so to speak. Let me connect these electrodes. Any sign of life will show in the form of a brain wave on the electroencephalogram. Good thinking, Professor. Mm. There. Now we'll give him a jolt. Hmm. Nothing. Try it again. Not a thing. Look. An eyelid moved. No, Payne, you're mistaken. Nothing moved. Professor, did you see? No. If he's alive, it's in a form unknown to us. What will you do with him? You finance the expedition, Dr. Vega. You call it. But, gentlemen, the museum... Mr. Payne, can't you forget that place? Does every scientific discovery have to go on display like a bargain in Gimbel's basement? Well, I only assume the the body would have to be disposed of somewhere. Are you sure you want it, Mr. Payne? After Norden's warning? What happened to Professor Norden had nothing to do with the crystalline man. He was probably delirious when you found him. All right, enough. The truth of this still escapes us. However, it, it can serve no purpose by remaining here. We may have it. You may regret it, Payne, but... Go ahead. Take it. Put it on display in the, the slumber room. That may well be what he's doing. Very well. We'll exhibit it in the public interest. With the provision that you retain the right to examine it when you choose. Oh, Professor... I just left the coroner's office. Too bad. The coroner's office? The guard we found unconscious here this morning. The one guarding the crystalline man last night. Yes? He just died. Act two of The Crystalline Man... Will be heard in a moment. But first, what causes traffic accidents? Weather conditions, road conditions, vehicle conditions? These all have some part in the total traffic picture, but it's the driver's own conditions, both mental and physical, that cause a great many of the accidents that you read and hear about day by day. You may find somewhere in the accident report that the driver in an accident was tired, angry, inattentive, or had been drinking. Harder to find than the report would be the driver's mental state at the time of the accident. In many cases, the driver didn't know, didn't think, or didn't care about the possibility of having an accident. How can he be made more aware of the danger he is causing to himself and everyone else? The National Safety Council suggests one good way is by an active community campaign against such thinking. And that's where you come in. Our community and our local safety organizations need your active support. Let's all accept our responsibility to join the fight for life and help save lives. And now, Act Two of The Crystalline Man. You kids eat like horses. It's a good thing your father makes a little money. It takes it all just to feed you. Craig, <laughs> now stop it. When you were their age, you had some life in you, too. <laughs> There's plenty of life left in this old boy, Mary. <laughs> hey, Dad, when you quit laughing, can I ask you a question? Go ahead, Jimmy. Try me. After supper, can I go over to Ralph's a while? And can I go, too, Daddy? Now, wait a minute. Both of you? What's going on? Ralph's got a new turtle. You children run along, but don't be out late. Oh, boy. Come on, let's go. Jimmy, you and Christine be careful and come home before dark. Sure thing. Bye, Dad. We will. Bye, Daddy. Wow. A couple of wild Indians. <laughs> Reminds me how old I'm getting. Oh, darling, they're just little children. I wish I could be carefree like that. Craig, 
things are different, aren't they? Oh? Oh. Something's bothering you. You're imagining it. No, no. Ever since that last trip, you, you all seem worried. How long has it been in the museum? Two weeks. Two weeks. And two more. Don't go on, Mary. The police said Mrs. Locks died from natural causes. She was found the next morning by her pail and mop in the Egyptian room. And what about Gus? Faithful old Gus. Best night watchman we ever had. I know. He was old and ready to retire. But don't you think something got him, too? He was found like Mrs. Locke, dead the next morning. Mary, you'd... Uh... There's talk now, Craig. Before long, people will be afraid to go to the museum. If the police find any connection between those deaths and this, this crystal and man, you'll all be in trouble. It's against any kind of logic to think that. Darling, you've said so yourself. There are many things in this world we don't understand. That doesn't mean they don't exist means at the moment we haven't the capacity for understanding. We've uncovered the genius of some civilization long past. If the man is not a statue, he certainly isn't a corpse, then he was preserved for a reason. Professor Norton suspected right away. He was trying to wall up the crypt so he wouldn't find him when he was fatally injured. Now the crystalline man lies in the museum like some Trojan horse, harboring God knows what menace from the dawn of time. I'm sorry, Mary. It had to come out. I'm glad you said it, darling. We should have destroyed him. We couldn't bring ourselves to do it. He's so lifelike. It would have seemed like murder. You can't let things like this continue. The police have nothing to go on. But you know what's wrong. You can stop him. All I have is a feeling. A suspicion. I promise you, Mary. What, darling? If there's another death, I'll take it on myself to find out what's wrong with the crystalline man. <laughs> Night Watchman. You want to ask him, Christine? No, you ask. Oh, all right. Mister? Eh? Museum's closed. You kids go away. I gotta ask you something. Run along now. Be dark soon. You ought to be home. Please, mister. We have to go inside. Oh, do you now? You tell him, Christine. Okay, Jimmy. We were here after school today. I left my homework in there. Museum's locked up. Come back tomorrow. Your books will be turned into the main office. You can pick them up then. But you don't understand. She has to study her homework tonight. Don't you see? Or I'll get a spanking. Do your parents know where you are? Gosh, no. They think we're at Ralph's seeing a turtle. We said that so I could get my homework. Please, mister. Well, you should be more careful. You don't want us to get spanked, do you? I'm not supposed to let anybody in. I might lose my job. Regulations, you know. It'll be a secret just between us. We won't tell anyone. Yeah, a secret. Okay. Just between us, then. But remember, no tricks. Whisk in, pick up homework, whisk out. Just like that. Check? Check. Know where you left it, Christine? Yes, on the table by the dinosaur. It's pretty dark. Can you see your way? I think so. Be right back. What's your last name, son? Taylor. What? Your father is Craig Taylor? Sure. Professor Abernathy's associate. I knew it. Now I will be in trouble. Don't worry. We won't tell him. Some days you can't win. Christine, hurry up. Let me go in. I'll find her. Ah, uh, yes. Good idea. Quick, get your sister. Hurry up, son. I don't want any trouble. Uh, now I've done it. When the professor finds that broken regulations, I'll be out of my job. That's funny. Those kids are taking a long time. Christine! Jimmy! Make it snappy! Hope nobody comes along the street and sees me here with this door open. Oh, goodbye job. Hey, those two ought to be back. I don't hear a peep out of them. Getting too dark in there to make much out. Hey, Christine! Jimmy! Uh-oh. Hey, don't like this. Hey, there! You kids all right? Was she, Craig? Edna Thorpe, a cleaning woman. Please, Mr. Taylor. I hope there won't be no trouble about me letting the kids in. How did I know they'd find old Mrs. Thorpe dead? Natural causes again, Craig? Police coroner said heart attack. Christine, you're sure the dead woman was the only thing you saw? Yes, Daddy. I just found my homework when I saw her. Then Jimmy came in. 
We were too scared to move, Dad. Uh Uh-huh. What are you going to do? Mary, you can see what we're facing here. Take the children home. I'll be along later. But, Craig, aren't you coming with us? No, I'm spending the night in the museum. It's time we learn the truth. Not alone, darling. That's too dangerous. The deaths occur only when there are no witnesses. The only way to find out is to bait the hook. I'll stay in there alone tonight. The killer may be tempted to strike again. And then we'll know. Ten past two. Getting sleepy. Big place. Those two dinosaurs aren't kittens. Egyptian mummies back in the east wing. Caveman relics. And the crystalline man in the slumber room. He's a standout, all right. Attracts the crowds in that jewel sarcophagus. There he is. Almost in a standing position. Sarcophagus tilted back so he can't fall out. Six feet of complete mystery. A man of the world, but not of this world. Question is, is he statue or is he real? I think Norton knew. Too bad he couldn't have told us more. The strange thing is that in this collection of relics of the past, he alone doesn't reflect some state of decomposition. The key lies there, I'm sure of it. But logic tells me our killer is flesh and blood. Wish they turned on more light at night. I was sorry I sent everyone away. The place has an eerie, uncomfortable feeling. Where's that chair I saw around here? Oh, there it is. Ah, feels good to sit down. I don't think it'll hurt to close my eyes for a moment. I've been over every inch of this place. Safe enough, I guess. Ah. Could be coincidence. Those people who died all old, including Norton. Oh boy, I'm getting sleepy. Maybe a little cat nap wouldn't hurt. Just a little one. When I touch thee, breathe deeply, savage, and thou wilt be gone. Wait! Then you are alive. Since the beginning of time. How old are you? Perhaps a million of five years. But what modern man doesn't go back that far? Radiation sickness. Then 
We are also men of science. Perhaps we, we can get together. Savage. Barbarians. We are a journey apart. Why haven't you risen before? I see, with the life force of others. Thou speakest well, Savage. So that's what Norton knew. Revive him and there'll be no stopping him. Thou knowest too much, Savage. What is thy saying? To the victor go to the spoils. I will touch thee, and thou wilt be gone. No! Stand still. It will be painless. Just a touch, and I will be of strength to begin my work. Don't come any closer. I am warning you. Where can thou escape? The wall is behind, and I am before thee. Keep away from me. Thou savage, I shall smite thee to death. Mary! I was all right. I couldn't let you stay alone. I hid over there. What happened to him? That scream, high enough to shatter crystal. You saved my life. Look, the man of a million years at our feet in a million pieces. just heard Macabre, a special Far East Network presentation. Tonight's story was The Crystal and Man. In our cast were John Buey, Milton Radmilovich, Walt Sheldon, Army PFC Alan Frank, William Verdier, Mitzi Hennessy, Christine Verdier, James Sheldon, Air Force Sergeant Al LePage. Associate Director was Carolyn Johnston. Technical Supervision by Hiroshi Ono with special sound patterns by Airman First Class James Conley and Air Force Sergeant Bob Eddy. This is Air Force Sergeant Al LePage speaking. Macabre was written and directed by William Verdier. Macabre comes to you each week at this time through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Mm-hmm.